Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. I hope you are having a wonderful day. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the September choices for Book of the Month. If you don't know what Book of the Month is, Book of the Month is a hardcover and audio book subscription service. This month we have six hardcover books you can choose from and six audiobooks you can choose from. Sometimes I do the hardcover, sometimes I do the audio. It just depends on my mood. So our first book, we're gonna start with the hardcovers. It is a contemporary fiction. It is by Chelsea Bleeker. I'm not sure if I said her name correctly. It is called Mad Women. This book is available as a hardcover and an audio. I did pick up the hardcover. This cover reminds me of somebody that's like sitting in the ocean and they kind of look sad, but if you take it from picture from a different angle, it could be the person trying to look ethereal as well. The quick take for this book. A prison letter set in motion. The slow unraveling of a woman haunted by her past in a twist-filled domestic drama. The good to know is family drama, unreliable narration. So this might be a tricky read with the unreliable narration. Drug and alcohol use and serious. This was my first choice for the month if I didn't mention that before. There is a trigger warning for this book. I'll highlight it for you. So the trigger warnings are C-A-D-A and it does mention infertility. So if any of the content warnings trigger you, please be mindful of reading the book. But please read all content warnings for books just in case they trigger you. And if you're ever concerned about would you be interested in a book within the first couple of pages, you can read a free sample if you're interested in that sort of thing. I don't read the free samples. I don't even read the synopsis before I come on camera to talk to you guys. I just pick from if the cover intrigues me and if the name of the book intrigues me. <laughs> synopsis. The world is not made for mothers, yet mothers are not made for the world. Just those two lines, I have some very interesting thoughts about that. Whether it comes from the idea that mothers should only be at home with the kids or as when, as mothers and you decide to have a career and be a mother, how that affects you in the workplace and how people perceive that some people believe that women should just stay home with the kids and not have a career outside of the home. And then if you choose to not have kids, that's also a perspective for the world as well. So this, those two lines hold a lot of thought of how people feel about people's choices to be a mother. Clove has gone to the extreme to keep her past a secret. Thanks to her lies, she's landed the life of her dream, complete with a safe husband and two adoring children who will never know the terror that was routine in her own childhood. If her buried in Anxiety threatens to breathe the surface clove, if that's her real name. Focus on finding the right supplement, the right gratitude meditation. But when clove receives a letter from a woman in prison in California, her past comes preaching into the present, entangling her dangerous games with memories and the people she thought she outrun. As we race between precaution and present day life in Portland, her childhood in Wiki high rise with her mother and father, Clove is forced to finally unravel the defining days of her life. How did she survive that day and what it will take to end the cycle of violence. Will the truth undo her or could it ultimately save her? Okay, this story intrigues me, but it also 
makes me question and think about we really can't outrun our past because somehow it's either always stuck in our subconscious and it can be triggered by certain situations that we fall into or we see something and we could have a flashback memory of something So we can't really outrun our past, at least I think so, because it's always going to be triggered by something we see. It could be triggered by something we taste, smell, anything. Sometimes we have to deal with the uncomfortable to move forward. And it sounds like Clove, if like they said that's her real name, is going to have to deal with her uncomfortable past to even continue the life, the good life that she landed for herself. Or it's going to pull her underneath the water and it might drown her and she could be ruining the life that she created for herself. Please remember there is a content warning for this book. I will highlight it for you. And please remember to read all content warnings for books just in case they may trigger you. Book number two is literary. It is called Blue Sisters and it is by Coco Mellers. The cover of this book gives me like comic book style artistry, especially with the four, I would guess, sister faces. It seems like the four sister faces have been done in a comic book book style and the sister with the dark hair she kind of reminds me if you've ever seen the show charm she kind of reminds me of the character prue that was played by shannon doherty rest in peace shannon doherty that's what the character on the cover with the dark black hair reminds me of the quick take three sisters reunite to grieve the loss of their sibling in this grappling family saga that will have you in your feelings so we're gonna if we choose this book we're going to prepare for emotion sadness it even gives you the life tragic this book is melancholy sticker so gonna prepare for some sad hard emotions because grief is a complex thing the good to know is emotional multiple viewpoints which i have a question about the multiple viewpoints i wonder if we're going to get the viewpoint of all four sisters even though one of them has passed away or are we just gonna get the viewpoints of the three sisters that are alive that is my question lgbtq plus themes siblings synopsis the three blue sisters are exceptional and exceptionally different avery is the oldest and a recovering heroin addict turned straight laced lawyer and lives with her wife in london i'm so glad for avery she turned her life around and she's doing good things that is wonderful to see i like a good redemption character bonnie is a former boxer works as a bouncer in los angeles following a devastating defeat and lucky the youngest models in paris while trying to outrun her hard partying way so it sounds like the sisters live all over the world london is a place i want to visit someday paris is a place i want to visit someday los angeles is also a place i want to visit someday they also have a fourth sister nikki whose unexpected death left Avery, Bonnie, and Lucky reeling. A year later as they each navigate grief, addiction, and ambition, they must return to New York to stop the sale of the apartment where they were raised. But coming home is never easy as it seems, as all the sisters reckon with the disappointment of their childhood and the loss of the only person who held them together. They realize the great secret they've been keeping might not have been from each other but from themselves this one is also intriguing i wonder what secret that they're keeping from each other 
And what is the secret that they might be keeping from themselves? I'm curious. Book number three. Book number three is a historical fantasy. I love the blue and gold on this cover. The cover looks like it has a picture of some sort of temple of some sort. And the waves coming up from, I would assume, maybe... The blue is supposed to represent the ocean. Maybe this has to do with some kind of mythology. Loch Ness Monster. Just because of how the waves are formed. This book is called A Song Down the River by Anne Lang. It is an early release. Quick take. Beauty is a weapon in an epic story about a powerful girl who uses her wiles to act as a spy and seduce a king. The good to know is sad, forbidden love, based on a classic, and war. This book does have a content warning. It is highlighted. It depicts a, the content warning, it depicts a death of a child. So please read all content warnings before you pick up a book, just in case a book may trigger you. Synopsis. Her beauty hides a deadly purpose. She sees beauty, which I'm not sure if I'm saying that name correctly, is seen as a blessing to the villagers of Wayu. Convinced that the best fate for a girl is to marry well and support her family. When Shashi draws attention of the famous young military advisor, Fanley, he presents her with a rare opportunity to use her beauty as a weapon, one that could topple the rival neighborhood kingdom of Wu improve the lives of her people, and avenge her sister's murder. All she has to do is infiltrate the enemy's palace as a spy, seduce their immortal king, and weaken them from within. Tainted by family in everything from classical instrument to concealing emotions, Shazi hones her beauty into the perfect blade. But she knows Faye Fanley can see through every deception she mastered. The attraction between them burns away any falsehood. Once inside the enemy's palace, Shazi finds herself under the hungry gaze of the king's advisor while the king himself shows her great affection. Despite his gentleness, and brutally look and Shizzy knows she can never let her guard down but the higher Shizzy climbs into the Wu court the further she and Fanley have to fail and if she's unmasked as a traitor she will bring both kingdoms down well it sounds like this woman has a lot on her shoulders and I'm also wondering if this book takes place in maybe China because of the Wu and the Yu. I'm wondering if this book has like some background of like China's history or something. But there, once again, there is a content warning for this book. The content warning is that it depicts the death of a child. Book number three is in historical fiction. It is called The Love Elixir of Augusta Stern. It is an early release by Linda Cohen Lohman. This book has like a herbal medicine cover with the mortar and pestle and then the leaves. So maybe the main character of this book is an herbalist and they come up with remedies to heal people. Quick take. Life affirming and inspiring story. This story of a retiree who learns to reclaim the magic and passion of her youth. This one is interesting already. The good to know is inspirational. It's a light read. It has a non-linear timeline. So we might be going from past to present or to future. That's usually the concept of non-linear timelines. And this is also a second chance romance. Synopsis. It's never too late for a new beginning. 
I would have to agree with that. On the cusp of turning 80, newly retired pharmacist Augusta Stern is adrift. When she relocates to Ralatono Springs, an active senior community in, in southern Florida, I have been to Florida before. I find Florida to be beautiful. She unexpectedly crosses paths with Irving Reevkin, the delivery boy from her father's old pharmacy, the man who broke her heart 60 years earlier. I wonder how Irving broke Augusta's heart. Or was he forced to break her heart? Or did he decide to break her heart on his own? As teenagers growing up in the 1920s, the 1920s was like the roaring flapper jazz area of time. Some of the most interesting and spectacular fashion. Everybody wanted to be fancy in the roaring 20s. A rust Augusta's role model, her father Solomon Stern, the trusted owner of the local pharmacy and the neighborhood expert on every ailment. But when Augusta's mother died and her great aunt Esther moves in, Augusta can't help but to be drawn to Esther's curious method as a healer herself. Esther offers Solomon's customers her own advice. Unconventional remedies ringing from homemade chicken soup to mysterious array of powders and potions. So did all of this homemade chicken soup and powders and potions, did it actually help? The people that she was giving this advice to. So this seems like a power play between Western medicine and Eastern medicine. Because to be a pharmacist, you have to go through medical training to do that. And it sounds like great Aunt Esther, she believed in food and plants to come up with her powders and potions. So it seems like... Eastern versus Western medicine comes into play a lot in this story. As Augustus prepares for pharmacy college, she is torn between loyalty to her father and the fascination with her great aunt, all while navigating a budding but complicated relationship with Irving. Desperate for clarity, she impulsively uses most potent elixir with disastrous consequences disillusion and alone augustus vows to reject esther's enchantments forever 60 years later confronted with irving augustus is haunted by the mistakes of her past what happened all those years ago and how did her plan go so spectacularly wrong. Did Irvin ever truly love her or was he simply playing a part? And can Augusta reclaim the magic of her youth before it's too late? This one is sad. And did she like talk to her aunt before she used this potent elixir? And how did the elixir change her? Like did it change her personality? Did it change the way she looked? Did it change Irvin's personality? Did what happen? Those are my questions. The next book is a thriller. This book does have a content warning. The content warning is highlighted. Please read all content warnings just in case the content warning may trigger you. So the content warning for this it depicts two different types of death and an S. This book is called Sleep Tight. It is a thriller by J.H. Market. Mm, this cover just looks like a haunted house. This book might be good if you're ready for, if you read a lot of thrillers and horrors during spooky season. We are moving into fall, even though this is a September choice. That means for most people, Halloween is right around the corner if they're not already planning for that and people usually like to read a lot of thrillers and horror books if you're into those sort of things during the fall season. The quick take. The lone survivor of a serial killer may hold the key to solving a new case when a copycat killer goes on the hunt. This book scares me already. 
And it already makes me sad for the lone survivor, the victims, the victim's family, and everybody that had to face this tragedy. Good to know, non-linear timeline, creepy. Synopsis, beware of the one who got away. Father Silence once terrorized a rural town of Twisted Trees. That's an interesting name for a town, Twisted Trees. Disguising himself as a priest to prey on the most vulnerable members of society. Okay, so this guy, Father Silence, and that's what they're calling him. He probably had all types of people confessing things to him. And he used their confession, which he's supposed to give them as a priest, give the people the confidence that when they confess, they are forgiven by their Savior and absolved from their guilt and sins by asking for forgiveness. So he used that to do what he did to these people and that is sick and twisted he not only hurt these people but he probably gave them a sense of fear or the wrong type of fear toward their lord and savior that's hard when police finally found his house of Horror. This one's hard to read, but I'm going to keep going. They uncovered 19 bodies and one survivor. A boy now locked away in a hospital for being criminally insane. Wow, this synopsis is hard to get through because I just feel so bad for these people. I know this is a story, but when you read these stories, sometimes these stories are things people actually experience. And some of these things do happen in real life. And to think from that perspective, if this was really happened or you hear about something like this happening it's emotional just to even imagining how something like this happened let's keep going we got this two decades later father silence is finally put to death but the next morning the detective who made the original arrest is found dead a new serial killer is taking credit for the murder and is calling himself the outcast. The detective's daughter, Tess Claiborne, is a detective herself, haunted by childhood trauma and the horrifying death of her father and the resurgence of the father's silent legacy. When Tess's daughter is kidnapped when Tess's daughter is kidnapped by the, the outcast, Tess is forced to face her worst fear along with buried memories with no leads to follow she travels back to twisted trees to visit the boy who survived and see what secrets might be buried in the tangled web of his broken mind okay that was hard to get through so this story just leaves me feeling questioning a lot of why this particular man father silent why would he do this and is Tess gonna find her daughter and what kind of emotion will this bring up for the guy she has to go ask questions about his past and what he went through surviving father silent I can already tell this book is going to be an emotional roller coaster, so please keep in mind the content warning for this book. And if this bothers you in any way, please don't read it. Remember, this book does have a content warning, it is highlighted for you. Remember, the content warning depicts a death of a child, an SA, and another type of death. The next book was my second choice. It is a paranormal romance, which I don't think I've ever read a paranormal romance before. The cover intrigued me with all the roses and then the fire. Skull had me questioning things, but the roses and the fire intrigued me. The good to know, quick take, welcome to Phantomus, a haunted mansion modeled on nine circles of hell where falling in love poses fatal risk. Well, falling in love with anybody is always taking a risk. 
the good to know is 400 plus pages so this one is a long one if you like longer book haunted house it depicts graphic violence and it's spicy and there's also not for the faint of heart this book is gruesome so this book might not be for you either if you don't like that sort of thing there is a content warning the content warning is pain it is highlighted on the screen so if you don't know what i mean by pain it is highlighted for you and please read all content warnings before you pick up a book just in case it might trigger you welcome to phantoma there are only two rules to the game stay alive and don't fall in love okay how do you do that is my question. How do you do that? Because everybody falls in love with someone at some point in their life. When Ophelia's sister disappears, there's only one way to save her. Ophelia must enter Phantomus, a deadly contest inside a haunted house, and claim its prize, a single wish. Oh, so Phantomus is a game, which I did not make that correlation at first. I thought Phantomus was a town, but that's good to know. Phantomus is a maze of twisting corridors and lavish ballroom of demons and temptation. Ophelia will face nine different challenges, each more dangerous than the last, but there only can be one winner. Other contestants will stop at nothing to eliminate their rival. Okay, I don't want to play this game. Mm, nope. I don't like haunted houses, and this just sounds way too dangerous, but also fascinating. But would not want to play this game at all. Each day the house creates a new monster, but just as Ophelia's fears threaten to overwhelm her, a mysterious stranger offers her a bargain. Charming, arrogant, infuriating attractive Blackwell claim he can guide her through the lethal trials ahead. All he asks in return is 10 years of her life. What does that mean? When you're asking, when you're asking for 10 years of her life, are you taking 10 years away from her life? Are you asking for 10 years of companionship, relationship, marriage? 10 years of what? Do you want her to work for you? You're asking for 10 years of her life. And I want to know what that means. Ophelia, Ophelia knows she shouldn't trust him. Blackwell doesn't seem dangerous, but appearances can be deceptive. Worse, still she feels a dark, an irresistible attraction drawing them closer and closer. Her life is on the line, but in Phantomus, the only thing that is deadlier than losing the game is losing your heart. Okay, this book is intriguing. I have so many questions about how this game plays. It does give me Jumanji and Zathora vibes if you've ever seen those movies. If you don't know what those movies are, those were the movies where you played the board game but everything you do in the board game comes to life. And since this haunted house is creating monsters and tasks for these people to do, this book does give me Jumanji and Zathora vibe. Remember there is a content warning for this book. It is highlighted for you. These are all the hard covered books. But let's look into the audiobook. And to purchase the audiobooks, you have to have the Book of the Month app downloaded. That's where you will find how to order them. You have to order the audiobooks through the Book of the Month app. So the first one you already heard about, it's the contemporary fiction that I first told you about that also comes in hardcover. It's called Mad Woman. The second one is When the Moon Hatches. So is this one about werewolves or the moon having children or something? Out of curiosity, this one is a fantasy. This book is by Sarah A. Parker. It says, in an epic rom romanticy, which romanticy is a romance in a fantasy book put together full of dragons and two and fey two cross lovers when meeting lovers meet when one helps the other escape captivity that's interesting other book is a thriller it's called the last thing he told me it is by 
Laura Dave, the repulsive story of his new wife and stepmother who unravels the mystery left behind when her husband disappeared. The next book is also a fantasy. It's called Hera. This was a choice from last month that only came in hardcover. Now they have the audiobook. This is based on Greek mythology. In the epic Greek retelling that interrogates power, patricity, and often alignment goddess is recasted in a new light. So this is a based off of the guy, goddess Hera. So if you're into Greek mythology, this book is for you. And the last one is a romance. It's called Miranda the Renegade. It is by Laura Lauren Lane. Ah. After getting passed over for tenure, a young professor decides to take a sabbatical and try out a new life approach. So remember, if you want a audiobook instead of a hardcover, you have to pick up your audiobook in the book of the month app. It will take your credit from there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what book intrigued you the most. What would you read if you were choosing from book of the month this month? Let me know what are you interested in reading this month. Remember I'm always thinking of you. Sending my love and bye for now.